Coming up on today's episode of the AMA Drone Report. The remote ID petition has over 29,000 responses. The remote ID proposal can set a precedent for general aviation user fees. And new members join the FAA Drone Advisory Committee. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world. In partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. I'm Sophie Herlock. The aviation community is coming together aggressively to fight back against what many see as unnecessary rulemaking that could destroy the model aviation community and damage the path into full-scale aviation. Comments on the remote ID and PRM have grown to over 29,000, most of which disagree with the FAA's proposed rulemaking. If you would like to leave a comment, please go to federalregister.gov. However, the deadline to leave your comment is Monday, March 2nd. Last Thursday on their blog, the AMA thanked those who have already made comments, stating, Thank you for everyone who has stood up for the preservation of model aviation by providing comments on the FAA's proposed rule for remote ID. Every comment matters. We also express extreme gratitude to everyone who has gone above and beyond to comment multiple times, encourage friends and family to comment, and even produce media content explaining just how this proposed rule impacts us as recreational model aviators. Now let's take a quick look at news making rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. It's time for today's Drone Minute. ASTM published its proposed standard for drone remote ID, covering the performance requirements for remote ID of UAS. The specifications applicable to UAS that operate at very low level airspace over diverse environments regardless of airspace class. It does not claim to address UAS operating with approval to use ADS-B or secondary surveillance radar transponders or to solve ID needs of UAS for all operations. The FAA will discontinue the Notices to Airmen publication, effective June 18th, with the final NTAP published on May 21st. The decommissioning is part of the overall Notices to Airmen modernization effort. No information currently contained in the NTAP will be lost. Rather, the information will be more easily accessed in the new digital format. Larry Bowron, the executive director of Battle Creek, Michigan Executive Airport, has big plans for the drone industry at the airport. Bowron is working with Battle Creek Unlimited, a nonprofit economic development agency, to attract large drone manufacturers to the Michigan airport. While the aircraft will be similar to those used by the military, Bowron said the industry is rapidly expanding into civilian uses. Australia's Civil Aviation Safety Authority indefinitely postponed a plan to require the registration of commercial and hobby drones, with no new deadlines set for the amendments to its drone regulations to go into effect. Initially, the registration amendments were targeted for implementation in July of 2019, but were delayed until the end of last year. Now the amendments are still on the table, but there's no date for registration to be required. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. FAA's drone remote ID NPRM is raising red flags among some in the general aviation community, particularly when it comes to what is perceived as a path to airspace user fees for general aviation. Remote ID would share information such as aircraft location, speed and altitude, as well as pilot location and would be required for anyone operating a drone in the NAS, with few exceptions. The data transmitted from the aircraft would be collected by a third-party UAS service supplier. The data would be transmitted over the internet and be available to the FAA or law enforcement for six months. All of this is much like ADS-B, except the USS would charge a monthly fee. If remote ID becomes a reality as proposed in the current NPRM, the FAA and various government officials could use it as a case study to push for ATC privatization and fee-based services. The DOT appointed Christian Ramsey 
president of UAvionics Corporation, and Lee Moak, founder and chief executive officer of the Moak Group to the FAA's Drone Advisory Committee. The DAC is a broad-based, long-term federal advisory committee that provides the FAA advice on key unmanned aircraft safety integration issues by helping to identify challenges and prioritize improvements. The committee helps to create broad support for an overall integration on strategy and vision. Members of the DAC are executives who represent a variety of UAS interests, including industry, research, academia, retail, technology, and state and local government. The DAC is chartered to have up to 35 members. And that wraps up this week's drone report. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more information on the exciting hobby drone world, head over to modelaircraft.org. I'll see you tomorrow.